The rate expression is a tool that's used to predict the behavior of a reaction under varying circumstances. Let's take a look at an example. First of all, let's consider this simple reaction between A and B forming C and D. We know that the rate of the reaction can be affected by several factors. Those include things like concentration, temperature, and of course, the concentrations of the reactants. The rate expression is something that incorporates all of these. First off, we have the rate, typically measured in moles per liter per second, or moles per decimeter cubed per second. We have two experimentally determined exponents, m and n. These generally take on the values of 0, 1, or 2. In further studies in chemistry, you may find out that these actually can be negative in some cases and fractional. But as I say, for at least this course, we're going to consider the possibilities of 0, 1, and 2. And finally, we have the constant itself, k. This constant incorporates things like the activation energy of the reaction and the temperature of the reaction. And we have the variables a and b, which refer to the concentrations of our reactants, typically in moles per liter. Let's look at these experimentally determined exponents for a minute and what they mean. If we have an exponent of zero, what that means is changes in that species have no effect on the rate of a reaction. Graphically, this would look like the following. I change, double, triple, or cut in half the concentration of A, and the rate remains at exactly the same value. If the exponent is 1, we have what's called a proportional change. In that situation, changing the concentration of A results in a proportional change in the rate of reaction. Doubling A doubles the rate. Tripling A triples the rate. Cutting the concentration of A in half cuts the rate in half. And finally, we have the exponent 2, which results in a squared effect on the rate of the reaction. This looks like an exponential curve. Here, doubling A results in a 2 squared effect, or a fourfold increase in the rate of the reaction. Tripling A results in a ninefold increase. Cutting the reaction or concentration of A in half results in a one quarter change in the rate of the reaction. So these are our possible exponents. To determine these exponents, let's look at some experimental data for this reaction. Here we've conducted three experiments varying the concentrations of our two reactants and studied the rate of the reaction over in the far right column. The general rate expression for this reaction is given as follows, where I replace A and B with my two species, nitrogen oxide and chlorine gas. If I want to determine the exponent for the nitrogen oxide, or M, I only want the nitrogen oxide chemical changing its concentration. From my experimental data, that would mean I would consider runs 2 and 3, because in those the chlorine has remained constant. Here I've doubled the concentration of nitrogen oxide. An examination of the rates of reaction indicates that they've also changed, so I know that the exponent's not zero. Let's look at how they've changed. I'm going to take the latter, 0.143, and divide it by the former, 0.036. I notice that that's about almost a fourfold change in the rate of a reaction. That would therefore correspond to 2 squared. That means that the exponent, then, for nitrogen oxide must be 2. It's a squared relationship. In a similar fashion, to find out the exponent for the chlorine, I only want to study those experiments where the chlorine concentration is changing. In that situation, I would consider only experiments 1 and 2. In that situation, I've doubled the chlorine. I haven't changed the nitrogen oxide, but I've also doubled the rate of my reaction. So doubling chlorine doubles the rate. That's a proportional response, indicating then that the exponent for the chlorine, at least, is 1. I can now revisit my rate expression and rewrite it as the following, where I've replaced the exponents m and n with my now known exponents 2 and 1. We say such a reaction is third order. We obtain that by adding our two exponents together. To finish off this, I want to now find out what the value is of k, the constant in this rate expression. To do that, I'm going to select one of the lines of data from my experiment. I could choose either experiment 1, 2, or 3. It doesn't matter because they will all give the same answer. For simplicity, I'm just going to choose the first line of data. I'm then going to take the values that are in that first line and substitute those into the expression I've determined so far. Substituting in those values, I get the following. 
A couple things to note in solving this. First off, in the second line, you'll notice the exponent here. When I multiply the, the values that I have here, moles per decimeter cubed squared times moles per decimeter cubed, I arrive at the following, moles cubed decimeters to the minus nine. In the next line, when I then solve for the value of the constant and its units, I therefore subtract the exponents. For instance, in the, this line, you'll notice mole on the top of the fraction and mole to the three on the bottom. By subtracting the exponent one minus three, I arrive at the final exponent, mole to the minus two. Similarly, decimeters to the minus three on top, decimeters to the minus nine on the bottom. When I subtract those exponents, I arrive at decimeters to the positive six. Anyway, here now is my final expression for the rate of this reaction. This expression now allows me to take any concentration of nitrogen oxide or chlorine, provided they're at the same temperature as my experiment, and thereby predict what the rate of the reaction will be in new circumstances. Thanks for watching, and please post any questions.